Greetings and salutations audience, Makes Game Mike here bringing you Ace in the Window. Today, live to tape from the Bicycle Hotel and Casino in Bell Gardens, California. Greetings and salutations audience, Makes Game Mike here with Ace in the Window. Today I'm joined by a co-host from the World Series of Poker, a friend from Dealing as well. Connie Dean. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How's Great it to going? see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the program today. Definitely. And helping out in the uh, co host chair today. Yeah, so, I'm happy to yeah, be it's here. It's great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> um, today we are shooting the show from the fabulous Bicycle Casino and Hotel in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Or I should say, Lovely Bell Gardens, California. That's right, Bell Gardens. Yes, from Bell Gardens, California. Check it out. Absolutely. So since you were available for the show, I figured it would only make sense if I um, brought in a lot of your experience and looked into kind of the coaching and playing background to look to see if we could pull any bits out for the audience to have a takeaway for, you know, how um, you're thinking about certain poker situations and, you know, how you might coach someone to go through a situation or think through a situation. So um, I'm going to use an old show of Poker Sesh as a guide on this one for a lot of the questions, and that was... Um, the show where Abe Lima interviewed Mike Basic, which, uh, if you're interested, you can find highlights on the Poker Sesh Design YouTube channel that is our sister channel, I suppose. Um, links are available in the description, and you can see all the highlights from the Mike Basic interview. Um, it's a lot of good general information and a lot of just discussion about poker. So we're going to go over kind of some of the same questions that Abe asked Mike um, and just kind of, you know, see how the answers are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there was a situation from the show where a caller called in and described the situation. I'm just going to summarize it real quick. Um, she described a situation in which she's playing with a group of retirees on a regular basis. I believe it may have been at a retirement home or something like that, that she would go and visit them and they wanted to play poker, she played poker with them. Um, invented the term OMC, stands for Old Man Coffee. Some people say that it was Lyman. I don't know the answer. The Super OMC makes the call, that's Old Man Coffee. Basically one of these guys who comes in, reads the paper, has coffee, doesn't really play too many hands. One of those kind of guys. It's a new breed of old man coffee. Old man coffee, Chris. Against these players, you should be overly cautious when they call your pre-flop raises, flop bets, and turn bets. Hey, it's old man coffee again. They were the stereotypical old man coffee type of player. Sipping coffee, playing aces, and folding everything else. Right. Um, so what she wanted to know was what was the advice for playing against a table like that? Because she would find herself with something like ace queen suited and following a nut flush draw and trying to determine, you know, she knew that if she hit the flush, she was going to get paid off because they're never folding if they had aces or kings. Um, she has a lot of implied odds. Exactly, but she also knows if they raise, that's what they have. What kind of hands is she wanting to continue with? So that's kind of where the discussion went was, how do you navigate that type of table and those types of players? Right. Sorry, I'm nursing a little cough here. But um, those types of players are super easy to read and mm -hmm. very easy to play against. Um, you are going to obviously play all of your pseudo connectors. Uh, a lot of times you you will hit two pair when they have an over pair, so that's a pretty bankable mm -hmm. win for you. Um, 
I would broaden your range of hands significantly. And, you know, you're going to catch sets. You're going to catch. And pretty much when they check to you, you should bet like 75% of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to do folding. If they check raise, then you know where you're at and you can dump the hand pretty inexpensively. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like they're playing their cards face up. Mm -hmm. And if you have the proper odds, I mean, it's, let's be honest, a lot of these guys you know, can lay down a pair of aces if a flush comes on the river. You don't have as many implied odds as you think. I mean, unless they have a history of paying off any hand mm -hmm. because they have aces. But most of these guys, they see that the flush hit and they'll shake their head and they'll fold the hand. So I would uh, I would avoid going in against them when they're you put them on aces and kings and things like that. You're gonna have, you know, 200 other hands that you can beat them in. Mm -hmm. So I would stick to those hands. Mm -hmm. That would be my strategy. Yeah. I would see a whole lot of hands. Seems to make sense to me. Ten three in the small blind, you know, that you would mm -hmm. normally fold. You might call right. those and see a flop and yeah. you hit your two pair against their aces, you're it's a gold mine for you. Yeah, that's true. They won't see that coming. They are like. not gonna see that. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna think no one on the planet is gonna call ten three offsuit. Yeah.